Fox 34 Football Friday, presented by Cardinal Sports Center. It's 10 o'clock, and it's time for Fox 34 Football Friday. And tonight on Fox 34 Football Friday, Lubbock High is back on the field after its two-week quarantine. Will the Westerners bounce back against undefeated Coronado? Probably not. Quarterback Q&A returns, but featuring post Sladen Pittman, our Brady King gets to know the dynamic, bold, gold quarterback. And unbeaten Idaloo battles high-flying Roosevelt for the district championship. Find out if the Eagles or the Wildcats will take home the gold ball. And welcome to week 11 here on Fox 34 Football Friday. I'm Rob Verby. And I'm Kurt Kaiser. Oh. Our game of the week featuring the unbeaten Wildcats of Idaloo taking on their toughest test so far this year, and that is Roosevelt. Let's head out to Eagle Field. Roosevelt was down 7 0, knocking on the door. Come in. Handoff goes to Jacob Torres. He takes it in, game tied at 7. Idaloo would storm back after Roosevelt came to tie the score up after they celebrate. Ryan Lozano, he would take it in, and the Caps would retake the lead 14-7 after the PAT. Eagles with the ball looking for the equalizer. Alexander Trevino, he would find an opening. He's off to the races with a big, big game. A few plays later, it would be Torres once again. This time, he cuts outside, goes in for the score. Point after was no bueno. The Eagles down by one. Roosevelt would get the ball back, but we have a fumble. Fumble. Idaloo would get the ball after that big fumble on the turnover there. Uh, recovering, it is Jared Jack. He comes up with the ball. Now, on offense, it's Jack at QB. He airs one out. Cooper Hill with the bobbling catch. Yeah, he caught it. Holds on just a couple of plays later. Lozano, we've mentioned his name a lot tonight. He would take it in from just a few yards out. 21-13, Idaloo at the half, and they go on to win it 42-21. to Not a bad game right there. Brady King was at the game. She's standing by live. You see her in one of these fancy boxes. You betcha we do. And Brady, tell us what the atmosphere was like out there tonight for this marquee matchup. Well, guys, the atmosphere was incredible. Both sides, the stands were almost completely full. Don't know if that's COVID safe, but I saw a lot of masks. So we'll say it's good to go. It was really loud here at Eagle Field. And first off, I just have to say congrats to Idaloo earning that gold ball. Perfect 8-0 record. But I'm also going to give some credit to Roosevelt. This was only their second loss of the season, and they really hung with uh, Idaloo that entire time. I mean, till the half, I guess. And that's when Idaloo really ran away with it. That dynamic quarterback running back duo Jared Jack and Ryan Lozano combined for half of the team's points tonight. And Roosevelt head coach Matt Landers is in his third year and has really done a great job with the Roosevelt team. And I can remember speaking to him before the season started and he says that this game was the one he was looking most forward to, a rivalry against his good friend Jeff Lofton at Idaloo. Landers called Lofton his mentor, so it seemed fitting that both of their seasons came down to this game right here. And obviously, Idaloo running away with it. But overall, it was a good fight for both squads tonight. And it seems like both will make the playoffs for sure. I'm not sure who exactly uh, the Wild, or yeah, the Wildcats will, or the Eagles will be playing, excuse me. But I do know that Idaloo should be facing off against Freona. And they clinched that number one spot, earning that district title tonight. So it was a good one. I'll send it back to you guys, Robin Kurt. Thank you, BK. Let's head out to Lowry Field, where Lubbock High making its return against Coronada. It was all the Sawyer Robertson show in this one. He sends a quick strike to Corey Ferreira. Mustangs on top at that point, 49-14 in the second quarter. Black and Gold would try to get something going before halftime, but it's Brandon Smith. He's picked off by Charlie. They call him the Big Boy Robinson. The Big Boy. Yeah, yeah. the Big Boy. Yeah. All righty. I would only call him the big boy if he would allow me to. <laughs> Third quarter now, Robertson is good, but he's not perfect. Throwing it away to Michael Coleman. Might be the highlight of the night for Lubbock High. But the Mustangs do roll in this one, Kurt. The final was 70 to 14. Yes, that is called a roll, all right. Friendship mm. Tigers, they're back in Wolfert, hoping to rebound against Midland Lee. Opening drive, McKaylin Young, as he would drive it into the end zone, Lee would go up by a score of eight to nothing. It was all the Rebels in that very first quarter. Quarterback Shamar Davis would air it out to Nate Suttle. 
And uh, outrunning the Tigers for the score. Friendship not giving up, though. It was William Bayuth as uh, after we see the celebration, William would roar past the defenders. That's what Tigers do best, mm -hmm. putting the Tigers on the board. But it wasn't enough. Friendship would fall again at home. The final score, 50 to 21. All righty, Plainview hosting Randall. And here come the Bulldogs. Isaac Garza, the quarterback keeper. He's got some running room. Kirk Geyser, he's a big boy as well. He lost the ball, but he was down already. Bulldogs would turn the ball over on downs. Raiders with the ball. Braxton Bird, little deception, will end up keeping it. Gaining some valuable yards, knocked out of bounds. A few plays later, Randall strikes. Bird again on the move. This time he finds an open Dylan Shine. And he somersaults Whoa. into the end zone. The PAT, though, was no good. I give them a nine. Should get an extra somersault. point for yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Six nothing Raiders. Bulldogs get fancy. A little flip a la Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Um, after that nice play right there to Mr. Hawk. And uh, well, then they're going to air it out deep down the field. Those two hooking up again. Garza to Hawk and Kirk Kaiser. That would set up this. The same two hook up again. Garza and Hawk. There they go. But guess what? What? Plainview would not score again. Randall would score 42 unanswered, Kirk wow. Geyser. And there's one of their uh, many touchdowns on the night. They yeah. take it 48 to 6. That is called momentum. Monterey yeah. on the. Have the horns first. Yeah, the, the, now they're on the road to face the Longhorns from Caprock. Plainsman needed to get the offense going tonight. They did. It was Trent White. He'll take it in from four yards out. Seven nothing Monterey. Second quarter now. Zion Martin will take it to the house from seven yards out. Plainsman up 14 to nothing. Monterey defense turning up the heat. They would force the QB to throw one up, and that is what we call an errant pass. It is picked off by Stephen Runnels. MHS back on offense. Harris scrambling, dun, dun, airs dun, it dun, out. Dun. Check out Blake Porter. Nice grab, Blake Porter, with a huge gain inside the 20. A few plays later, Monterey backed up just a little bit. Are you ready? That doesn't matter. Harris dun, again. Dun, dun, dun. There it is. The band is playing. He rolls to his right. He spots a wide open MJ Singleton. 21 nothing Monterey at the half, and they cruise. 35-20 to 20 over Caprock. By the way, Porter was playing quarterback in the second half of that game. All righty. All right. The Red Raiders looking for the first road win of the season. And the Scarlet and Black win the battle for the saddle, Kurt, against TCU tomorrow afternoon. Let's hope so. Get your guns up. Our high school analyst, Garrett Luft, will break down Idaloo's win over Roosevelt. And New Deal hopes to cap off their season with the win at home. Did the Lions get the job done against the Roughnecks? That's next on Fox 34 Football Friday. Most comprehensive. This is Fox 34 Football Friday. And welcome back, everybody. Sundown making the long trip up to the real deal, new deal for the district title. And let's find out if the Roughnecks can rough up the Lions. Let's head out now and check out the new deal Lions Stadium where the Lions hosting those sundown Roughnecks. The Lions would strike first. The quarterback keeper here by Harley Patterson. He walks it on into the end zone. Lions would continue to roll as the cheerleaders look on, inspiring the fans. That they would continue to roll until this deflected pass, that is. That would be intercepted by Carson Boggs. Carson would be brought down just shy of the goal line. Very, very close. So Carson sets them up. The following play, the Roughnecks would score. Quick handoff, EJ Hernandez. Mm. He walks it into the end zone. And the Roughnecks. I love it. Back. I love it when you do that. Ah, it's great. I, I like it. The Roughnecks. Yeah. Oh, they would get stop the ball it. Stop it. Over on downs, but the Lions would not take it lying down. They get a quarterback sack. That would end the first quarter. Even with a back and forth game, the Lions would fall to the Roughnecks. 35 21. Sundown wins. Yeah, we saw those cheerleaders twice. Yes, right. we did. They were busy tonight. What is now, that, Kurt? We're watching Smyre and Rope. What is that? That Seamus the Dog? Yeah, it oh, makes wow. his uh, football Friday debut, I think. <laughs> Eagles FFA, they're repping at the concession stand, nachos, popcorn, coffee, back to the game, up 14 zip. That's RJ Medrana, Medrana, sorry. Mm -hmm. He connects with Bronson Putman, who takes a hit but keeps the chains moving. Ball would go over on downs. Mr. Eagle turned his head and looked at our camera. The uh, Bobcats get on the board. Ethan Ramirez finds Ethaniel Villegas. Wide open, just like Gary Cooper dodging crop dusters in North by Northwest. Yeah, mm, here's a preview of the Cats of and Eagles the in their matchup. Come 28 to, or 20 to 28, William Ronch, more like William Perry, puts Meyer up 16 to 14. Good sportsmanship there. 
As you can see, we don't always see that. Big Blue enjoying its first outright district title in 27 years. The Bobcats would win it 54 to 28. All righty, Trinity, uh, what is that? Is that a lion? <laughs> Trinity Christian taking a cross on. between a lion and a dog, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah. my Lord, I didn't know they were out here. Oh, yeah. Here's Lucy the lion, no harm uh, to any money. <laughs> Lucy was a golden retriever. First quarter, no score. Hayden White rolls over into the end zone. Was he in? The man in the stripe says yes. yes. Check out the sunset. Oh, Very looks like nice. a painting. That's pretty. Yeah. Uh, back to the game. White dives in once more, just like Terrell Davis in Super Bowl 32. Where's Lucy? There she is. Oh, Here's hey, Lucy. Lucy. She looks yeah. different. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, as Ed McMahon would say, here's Johnny. Johnny Salazar puts TCHS on the board, says hi to our video journalist. That would be A Money Wood. And, uh, well, the party, however, was short-lived. The Eagles make good on their five-hour bus trip, Kurt, yeah. as they down the Lions 21-14. Well, state-ranked Idaho with a tough match tonight. Uh, they came out on top, though, against Roosevelt. Garrett, it was close at the half, but the Wildcats ran away with it in, in the second half. What do you think was the difference in that game down the stretch? Yeah, it was a lot of Ryan Lozano tonight for Idaho, and that's been kind of the key for them. Jeff Lofton's team finishes the year undefeated, uh, which is no surprise. The big thing there, though, is you avoid uh, the nastiness from up north because Canadian, Spearman, Childress, all state-ranked, one, two, and three out of District 3. So that means that now Idaho gets the, the fourth place team in the first round of the playoffs, which is Friona. That's a much more pleasant trip. Roosevelt now has to take on an angry Childress team who's still state ranked and just got drubbed by their rival uh, Canadian. Uh, I don't know that I want to be Matt Landers, but, but they've got to prove it at some point. Hey, Garrett, let's talk about Coronado. They keep their undefeated season alive against Lubbock High. And you know Mustang fans are, are asking this question. Is anyone going to be able to stop them, or is Coronado going all the way to Jerry World this year? What do you think? Man, when you look at the stats from the first half, get these numbers tonight for Cy Robertson. 21 of 22 with no interceptions, 403 yards, seven touchdown passes, and a half, all right, to five different receivers. Uh, crazy numbers. But what I thought was kind of interesting, Brandon Smith threw for – 200 yards nearly by himself for Lovick High in the first half. Nobody's put up that kind of numbers against Coronado. I wonder if there maybe is a little bit of a chink in the armor right now defensively. The uh, Mustangs had a week off, and so maybe they're a little rusty. But uh, Lovick High was, was doing something offensively tonight, which I think is something to watch out for. See if that Coronado defense maybe uh, need to be shored up a little bit right now. Were you surprised with the friendship result to Midland Lee? No, I mean, I really think that was what uh, I expected to see. They, they hung around for a while, but then Lee's defense kind of slowed them up and they weren't able to keep track uh, defensively with what Lee did. Now, they get Abilene high in a week and then they have a chance to, to win two games and still make the playoffs as the four seed. So I don't think all hope is lost for the Tigers yet. All righty, Garrett, check in a little bit later. Thank you, sir. The Bold Gold have won the district title. Coming up on Football Friday, how their regular season came to an end. But first, our Brady King gets to know their QB a little bit better with a quick... Fox 34 Football Friday. And it's now time to get to know post-quarterback Slayton Pittman. And our Brady King put the QB on the clock in a rapid-fire Q&A. Welcome everyone to your QB Q&A here on Football Friday. I'm Brady King, joined with Slayton Pittman. Slayton is the quarterback of the undefeated post Bold Gold. How you doing, Slayton? I'm good. Good to hear. All right, well, in just one minute, we're going to ask Slayton some hard-hitting rapid-fire questions. You ready? Yes. All right, let's get the timer rolling. Throwing or running a touchdown? Running. <laughs> good answer. Favorite professional quarterback? Lamar Jackson. Favorite sports movie? Remember the Titans. <gasps> That's a good one. Same. Whataburger or Brahms? Whataburger. Easy. Best Netflix binge? Uh, the 100. <laughs> the 100? Astros or Rangers? 30 seconds. Rangers. Gatorade or Powerade? Gatorade. <laughs> Xbox or PS4? PS4. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Same. Song you play to get pumped up before a game? Um... No Five, sucker. Four. Ooh, three, Thanksgiving or Christmas? Two, Christmas. Christmas. Same. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> all right. You did good. That was quick. We got almost all the questions in. Um, okay. Thank you, Slayton. This is my last question. As a coach's 
daughter myself um, back in the day. I know that it can be super fun, also has its challenges. What's the best part about being the coach's son? Um, probably after the game, talking about the game at my house with my dad. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my favorite part. Yeah, you get the dad and, and you get coach all in one. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. All right, well, thank you guys for watching. This has been your QB Q&A with Slade and Pittman. All righty. Um, Kurt, your song to get you motivated real quickly? Uh, Eye of the Tiger, Rob. Eye okay. of the Tiger gets me going. Yeah. I, like, I like Barry Manilow. I write the songs and make the young girls scream. Another, <laughs> another <laughs> good one. I'm always running through no. brick walls after I hear that song. What was that? I, I write the songs that make the... The young girls cry. Cry, they, right? Yeah. Okay. I write the songs of love and <clears throat> special right. things. Yeah. Okay. It's a good song. Post capped off their undefeated regular season a little differently this year. The Antelopes were supposed to play tonight, but their game was canceled due to COVID-19 within the Tohoka football program. However, it's another district championship for the Bold Gold as they gear up for another postseason run. We caught up with Coach Pittman, who talked about how special this class really is to him. I don't know how to describe it, but like I said, they're a special group. Uh, you know, I, I've known them since they're a little kid. You know, a lot of that's because Slayton's in that class. So, mm -hmm. you know, I know there's a lot of good kids in that class, and, uh, you know, I want the best for them. And, and uh, you know, hopefully, you know, we can get going and, and kind of get on a roll and, and see where that roll takes us. Yeah, they're on a roll indeed, having their first playoff game next week. I tell you what, uh, that kid can play some football, Mr. Slayton. Pittman. Yeah, that's a neat story. It's always fun when the quarterback and the coach are, are related like that. Yeah, we had that yeah. last year, too, we did. with, uh, with uh, Abernathy yeah. and, and Coach yeah. Daly and his son Bryson. All righty, it's the battle for the saddle. Get ready in Fort Worth this week. Can the Red Raiders take that trophy and another step toward a bowl game appearance? The Fox 34 Football Friday. Just when you think you've seen it all, something else weird happens. Red Raiders already missing last week. Their leading tackler, Krishan Merriweather, out with an injury before the OU game. Well, they also lost defensive tackle Tony Bradford in pregame warm-ups. Yeah, that's right, Rob. We all know what happened in that game, of course. Was not pretty. Nope. The uh, Sooners scoring at will in the first half. D.C., Keith Patterson, on the moment that he found out about Bradford from the head athletic trainer. I mean, I come out of the tunnel and Drew met me on my way onto the field. Uh, I mean, yeah, I about threw up. <laughs> just, I, you just, you just got to, like I say, you just got to put the next person in and let's go. And I mean, that's, that's 2020 COVID-19 typical Halloween night football, I guess. I mean, it's just like, I, I can't even tell you. I mean, um, I, 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 I don't ever remember losing a starter in a warm-up. Um, that I can think of. I did. I, I don't remember it, but that, that was just about typical of the way things went. Yeah, I pulled my groin one night running into the studio here, Kurt. <laughs> you did. I remember yeah, that. Oh. And I had a hitch in my giddy up, but I yeah, made it. You did. You were, you were a real trooper there. I, right? I was. Yeah. Um, but really, in all seriousness, I mean, that is something else when you hear a coach explain what happens, you know, like that. And, and obviously, when you're playing a team like Oklahoma, and, and you're missing your leading tackler, yeah. and then you miss one of your better defensive linemen, and go figure, you know, something yeah. like, like, like this happens. And I mean, right it was before just, the game, right before right the game. Right before yeah. the game. Yeah, that's got to be tough. And, you know, I, I don't really know what's going on tomorrow with their health. I mean, they're pretty hush-hush about stuff, you know, right. with, with, with things going on. But, uh, you know, obviously last week is a game you want to just flush and, and, and move on. Um, I don't think any of us really expected the Red Raiders to get blown out like they did. But they did. Oklahoma appeared to be, you know, hitting its stride. You look at the matchup tomorrow against this team right here, TCU, and, and Max, don't call me Dugan Duggan, has turned into a pretty good dual threat quarterback, Kurt. So um, the road team, though, uh, ironically, has fared pretty well in, in yeah, this good series. Yeah, for us, yeah. They played uh, fairly well. And also, historically, the Red Raiders, Kurt, after they get blown out by Oklahoma, they usually win the next weekend. So we've got some good signs, Rob, and, and really the next three games winnable. And, you know, they, they, they can start a streak here. We mentioned the Bulls, and I like it's out, outlandish, but it's not. You win three right. in a row here, you can end it with momentum and maybe get in the ball. Well, and I also think this year there is a chance that if you finish 5-5, five and five, yeah. you could still go bowling. I don't know how exactly that's going to work, and I don't know if all of these Bulls are going to have, you know, enough people to staff 
a, a bowl game at a right. certain time of the year. You know, can you can you travel? I mean, none of us really know. But anyway, the Red Raiders kick off against uh, TCU tomorrow at 2.30. Brady King will have the highlights and post-game reaction tomorrow night on Sports Overtime. Well, coming up next on Football Friday. First and most comprehensive, this is Fox 34 Football Friday. Idaloo wins 42-21 over Roosevelt. Lubbock High thumped by Coronado 70-14. And district play has been pretty rough for the Friendship Tigers. They fall to middle the lead tonight 50-21. Offense comes alive for R squared. The Randall Raiders topping plain view 48-6. Thursday night lights for Monterey. They gain their second win of the year beating well it's not really their second win yet because the Lubbock High forfeit hasn't really been official yet so they're really one and one in district play they beat Camp Rock 35 to 20. Sundown all business the Roughnecks go to New Deal and they leave with a win 35 21. And some early turnovers too much for TCHS to overcome the Eagles of Lake County Christian they hold off the Lions 21 14. Bobcats run the table in district they beat Robes 54 28 and you can replay us on fox34.com you can look at all their four-legged Football fans there. Was that Lucy that it, looked like a it lion? It was Lucy. Pretty exciting stuff. All yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, the Bull Gold made it all the way to the state championship game last year. Now they're undefeated again. Garrett, uh, what do you think? I mean, is is this team, you know, gonna gonna go that far again this year? You think? Well, guys, first of all, isn't it crazy that we're already here at playoff time for four A down to one A? I mean, we've uh, got five A and six A rolling now, but it's just crazy how fast this year has gone with everything else that's kind of been in the picture. But uh, no, I'm not surprised at all that Post is here. Uh, probably fortunate for Tahoka tonight that uh, they had other issues that prevented them from playing because a big issue in playing Post would have would have probably been worse for them than actually showing up at the game. Uh, you know, I don't know what to expect. They're going to open with West Texas High. I just don't see them getting challenged until maybe the regional final, potentially, if it's a Cisco uh, maybe a Holly. Panhandle's not bad in the, in the district just to the north, but I just don't think anybody in this region can compete. The team they lost to in the state championship last year, Refurio, uh, they already had a by district bye because their opponents already said, no, nah, we, we'd rather not. And they're, they're going ahead and, and forfeiting that game. So I don't know. Looking at region three and four, I, I think there's a number of teams out there. Shiner is ranked ahead of post as well in the state rankings and has been all season. But post is, is as loaded, in fact, maybe more loaded with some young guys that have now contributed than they were a year ago. They're ready to go. Hey, Garrett, let's look ahead to next week. What's our game of the week as we uh, as we go to next week? I think it's got to be Coronado uh, and Amarillo High, and that's a game that uh, uh, maybe wasn't as big a deal a week ago, but Amarillo High was up 20 to nothing tonight on state-ranked Tascosa. Uh, Tascosa stormed back to win the game 28 to 27, uh, but I definitely think that uh, Amarillo is up in that echelon. Those three schools look to be the three that are going to buy it out for a district title. So Coronado is probably going to get its, its stiffest test yet. I don't know that they've really seen this kind of challenge yet. Uh, so what does Sally Roberts do? And again, after what I saw earlier tonight, I'm very interested to see how the Coronado defense looks against Emerald High because they really struggled to slow down Lovick High tonight for a half. Yeah, if you had a line to put on that game, Garrett, I mean, not that we condone gambling, but uh, <laughs> the game we just talked about, what, what would Coronado be favored by? You know, I think I would favor Coronado probably by 10 points, something around there. I think they are better than Amarillo High, but at the same time, uh, I don't expect the kind of blowout that you've seen. And usually you'd be talking about like a 50-point spread and be comfortable with what Coronado's done. This should be a, a much different kind of ball game for the Mustang. Good job on the Skype, and I uh, hope you you're bet. feeling well, and take care, my friend. All right, we're Man, out of time. That's a good fight, guys. Thanks. All right, for Curtin, I'm Rob. Have a great weekend. So long, everybody. Good night.